Here's how you do a valve clamp seal replacement on an M73 engine. First, you take off the intake manifolds, you take off the uh, valve covers. In my case, it's off of the car, but the same thing can be done when it's in the car. And uh, I'm not gonna explain those processes because there's lots of tutorials on those. But then when you get to the actual valve stem seals, um, what you need to do is first support the uh, well, first put the, the cylinder that you're going to work on in top dead center uh, by rotating the engine in the direction of rotation. So once you position it that way, you support it to either by pushing uh, a, a rope inside or the better method by using uh, compressed air. So put in something like this. This is from a, a vacuum leak tester. Uh, it screws into the <clears throat> spark plug port so you do that and then uh, plug in compressed air when it's in the top position this will support the the, uh, the valve and won't let it drop in uh, and that will allow you to separate it from the uh, valve keeper and then remove the, the spring first you need to remove the rocker obviously Rem then remove the valve keepers when pressing the spring down uh, then remove the spring itself, pull out the uh, valve stem seal, put in the new one, put the spring back, put the keepers back, put the rocker arm back, and then uh, then you're done. I'm going to show you this in uh, detailed steps, so keep watching. Okay, next order of business before uh, replacing the valve stem seals is to remove the uh, oil rails. Now the important thing is here not to lose the washer and not, not to let it fall into those holes. There's a washer underneath. Okay, there we go. Here's the way to position the piston while working on the valves. You want the piston to be almost at the top dead center in order to protect the valve in case your uh, air supply or whatever is holding it uh, falls through and the, the, the valve drops down. If the piston is not at top dead center or near top dead center, the valve will just drop into the cylinder and you won't be able to find it or get it out and you have to take off the, the, the head. Uh, so it, for, for kind of for insurance, you need to keep the piston close to the top position. If you keep it at exactly the top position like it is right now <clears throat> with both cams, uh, cam lobes pointing um, as far up as they can together, um, that doesn't give you enough clearance for the, the valve to go in because it hits the piston and if you compress the spring it, and lower the valve, it will hit the piston and you probably won't get enough clearance to take the rocker arm out. You need to compress it even further and in order to do that, take the piston a little bit down from the top dead center position. When you're working on the exhaust valve here, take it down uh, from, basically make sure that the, the cam lobe is, is pointing straight up. Um, if you're going this way and you turn the engine uh, forward, then you won't get enough clearance on this side because the cam lobe will be almost touching the, the rocker arm. You won't be able to take the, the rocker arm out. So when we're working on the exhaust valve, go a little bit past, uh, sorry, keep it a little before top dead center, and you work, when you're working on the intake valve, go a little bit past top dead center. So, if I rotate it now, something like this position will be ideal for the intake valve. Because the piston is now a little bit down, but not so far that you can drop the valve in, but it gives you enough clearance to, to compress the spring all the way. And at the same time, this lobe is not in the way uh, uh, of your spring here, uh, of your, sorry, of your rocker arm here, and you can take it out easily. You can probably go a little bit further even, kind of like this. This is probably fine too. You don't want to go too far forward because then the piston will fall 
too far into the cylinder and then it won't support the uh, valve in case it falls in. On the exhaust valve, <clears throat> you need to do a full rotation because you don't back out the engine. That's not a good practice. Do a full rotation and leave it a little before top dead center. Something like this would be ideal. And then you can work on this. You can compress the spring all the way because the piston is not going to uh, uh, get in the way of that. And at the same time, you have plenty of clearance here on this side to take the rocker arm out. First step is to install the uh, spring compressor tool. You hook on the upper part onto the, uh, to the camshaft, like this. And then the lower part, you need to adjust it if necessary to grab onto the, to press onto the valve, like this. The fitment is a bit difficult because uh, the rocker arm is in the way, but just try to get it as flat as possible. Uh, and press in like that if you can get it further yeah now now it's properly seated there we go you can adjust it usually yep so now we can press see how we I'm pressing the uh, spring here I'm compressing the spring and inside it uh, the valve is going down let's see Make sure the valve is going down together with the spring, like that, it's compressed all the way, okay, and now with my other hand I can pick up the rocker, the rocker arm and lift it up from the other side. The clearance is not very good, especially with the compression tool attached, but the rocker is out. There we go. Now you can release this. Reposition if necessary. And then the goal now is to compress the spring while the, pist uh, while the valve itself, this is the top of the valve here, stays up. How do we keep it up? Well, we put compressed air in the cylinder. So let's do that. I've already hooked it up. Give it, I don't know, four or five bar, three or four bar, something like that. And now when I press the tool, see how the valve actually stays up and the spring compresses down? If the valve doesn't uh, want to stay up, if it goes down when you press it and it uh, goes down together with the spring, you can hear how the voice is, the noise is hissing here from the compressed air. Uh, that means the pressure from the compressed air is not enough to hold it and it might be a little bit stuck here on the on the valve guides. Uh, that's fine, you can just kind of hit it like this a few times. Well first increase the pressure a little bit, you can do that on the... increase the air pressure and just kind of tap it a bunch of times until you break the, the stuck part. Just jiggle it, wiggle it. Yep, yep, there you go. I think it, it went, it got separated once. Yep, okay, there we go. So now we're good, we can proceed with the rest of the procedure, which now uh, the next step is to remove the valve guides. Uh, sorry, the valve keepers. And now, I can take up. I can pick up these little uh, shells here that are holding the valve. Uh, they're called valve keepers, and it's easier to pick them. It's easiest to pick them up with a magnet like that. And now, when you release this, nothing's holding the valve anymore only the compressed air inside the cylinder. So now the spring can be fully extended and removed. You can remove the tool as well at this point or just tilt it up. Now you can just remove this. Keep in mind that the top part, the spring uh, seat here comes off, don't lose it. And don't uh, mess up the orientation, the wider part goes to the bottom.
Now during this time it's critical that you keep the compressed air in, otherwise the valve will drop in. Uh, this is the valve stem seal here, and there's a special tool that kind of like a like pliers that pulls it out. Uh, I guess you could also use regular pliers, but this one makes it easier. So just kind of rotate and pull up. It takes a bit of force, but nothing too crazy. And when you're doing that, try not to scratch your camshaft. There we go. Usually what happens with these is the old valve stem seal will get brittle and not malleable anymore. See how when I squeeze it, it just, I bent it. It's, it's almost like plastic. It's not rubber anymore. It doesn't spring back to its normal position. So that means that it can't really seal very well. So clean this up. Sometimes there's a little bit of uh, like string. Yeah, right there. There's a bit of a, some leftovers from the old valve stem seal that looks like a string. Make sure you remove those. Let me see that. Make sure you get rid of those in order not to uh, mess up the sealing properties of the new one. It's probably easiest by hand if you can reach or not. Okay, picked it up, right there. But I think there's more. There's, yeah, one on this side here, yep. Yep. Right there. So once you've removed all that crap, Clean it up, make sure there's no more left. And just put in the new valve stem seal. How do you do that? Well, first you put on this thing, which is kind of like a condom. You put it in there to avoid scratching the, surf, the, uh, the valve itself while the uh, valve stem seal is going in. Then, you put this thing in, this is a new valve stem seal. Slide it in as far as you can by hand. As you can see, it's not all the way down. So now we need to just hammer it in with a small uh, deep socket. I'm using a, a 12, uh, 12 millimeter. But yeah, you, there's special tools for this as well, but a 12 millimeter socket works, works fine and just start tapping it lightly and you will feel when it bottoms out and the sound will change too. Okay. There, it bottomed out. Doesn't need to be very, uh, you don't need to hit it very hard at all, just tap it lightly. So, then we remove the condom. And it's reassembly time. Put the spring back on. Don't forget the top collar thing. Now put your uh, compression tool again uh, in again. Uh, make sure it's positioned properly. Okay. Compress the spring as far as it will go, <clears throat> and put back the keepers. Now these guys are really difficult to put in. These these small keepers here, the two-part shells, they're really difficult to put in. And the best way I found to do it is by hand. You can try tweezers, you can try magnets, you can try various other methods, but what I found out is easiest is by hand. The thinner part goes toward the bottom. So if you can reach there with your fingers, it's easiest to do it that way. But the problem is obviously it's hard to reach. Ah, 
hard to reach with your fingers and the gloves are kind of getting in the way so you might try doing that without gloves but something like this yeah there we go okay and now the trick I found is once you put one side on lightly rotate it making sure it doesn't separate and now you have room to put the other one at the bottom without having to reach at the top because there's no way to reach at the top okay. just make sure you align it yeah there we go okay and now when you lift up it slots into place and now there we go all done here the only thing that's left is to well you can also kind of wiggle it a little bit to make sure that it uh, seats itself properly in case it, it was in a little crooked the first time and then uh, you just install the valve the valve rocker this part goes toward the uh, spring and the other part that has a cup goes toward the um, the other end of the uh, on the other side of the camshaft so again like oh at this point sorry forgot to say at this point we're gonna stop the compressed air stop the compressed air in order to stop supporting the valve from underneath because we don't want the keepers to come off again we want the valve to press in together with the spring if it doesn't help it with your finger like that just press it in make sure it goes all the way in and then slide the rocker cover uh, the, the, the rocker inside okay. positioning of my tool is getting in my way so I'm gonna try it one more time help it with your finger to make sure the valve itself goes in and not just the spring if you compress the spring and not the valve the keepers will probably come off and you have to start all, all over with the reinstallation and try to slide the, lo the rocker arm in. A little more. And then compress. And slide. Yes, this time it went in. Okay. Make sure it's positioned above the valve stem. This one is, is not positioned yet. I need to push it in further. I think my tool, my compression tool, is in the way. Okay, I'm gonna stretch it a little. Okay, there we go. All right. And we're done. Now I'll do this 23 more times for the other valves.